This is Kennedy from Hill Country Weavers, and I'm going to show you guys um, how to do sort of the weave back V cowl. Um, you've probably seen these, but you might not know exactly how they work, where you actually take the beginning of your weaving and weave it into the, the fabric at the end. So the warp will actually be your weft on this section. Um, so there's a couple of things you need to know in order to be able to do this. Um, first, you do need a couple of extra tools. I've got a spare dowel rod. Um, some looms will come with this, some of them won't. If they don't, they're pretty inexpensive to get like uh, at a hardware store. You can also use a pickup stick um, or a spare stick shuttle, um, but I'll show you why you want something that's fairly narrow um, and kind of how that will affect what you're doing. Um, the other thing I do like to have is some masking tape. Um, I've got painter's tape, which is nice because it will come cleanly off of your loom. Um, if you use a regular masking tape, you might want to like de-sticky it on some pants or something like that, just so that you can pull it back off the loom without it leaving like a residue or glue or anything like that. Um, so what I've done is I have woven um, my cowl and at the very beginning, I left um, a long section unwoven. So we're gonna come to that and I'm gonna undo it and then bring it back around. Um, you do need however wide your cowl is gonna be. You ideally want that distance from the front of your loom to about where you're able to get um, a weft through. So um, where you're able to get a good shed, basically. So uh, you wouldn't want to do a super wide piece with this if you have a very shallow loom. Um, I did this one about 10 inches wide, so it should work on most looms. Um, but if you go wider than that, know that you'll need to kind of plan based on how deep your loom actually is. Um, the other thing is you do kind of have a finite uh, how short the cowl can be because you do need to be able to retention it in order to weave it. So um, I have woven 30 inches of fabric and I would say that's probably the minimum you can do for this. I wouldn't go shorter uh, or you're going to have some problems with getting it tensioned. And also just being able to have enough, enough room to get it around there. So I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this off the front beam. So I've loosened my tension here, it's pretty loose right now. Uh, and I'm just going to release the front brake and we're going to take that off. You can see here's my cowl that I've woven. And one thing I do when I, I need to track length, this is actually a real helpful tip, is I have these little um, they're not even really locking markers. I think they're usually used for crochet. They're the little, um, I don't know exactly what you call that, but they're the, the hook on stitch markers. And you can place those every like five inches, four inches, whatever works for you. Um, and it makes it real easy to track the length of your piece. Um, if you're like me and you're kind of lazy, you can say, I need this to be 30 inches and I'm gonna put out the number of markers that I need ahead of time and then just, weave until I've used them all. You do have to be careful, especially if you have any cats, that they don't walk off though. So you can see here at the beginning, I've left a long uh, piece of the warp unwoven. Take my little piece of spacer paper off. So um, this is just tied on with a little weaver's knot, so we're just gonna undo those. You do want to be careful while you're doing this that you don't accidentally pull any of your warp threads. Um, especially this particular cowl is woven pretty loosely because I'm going to ever so slightly felt it um, because I would like it to be a slightly tighter cowl than I am capable of weaving. So when I shrink it up a little bit, it'll be a little bit smaller. Um, so we're just going to work through and undo all of these.
Um, and the way these are tied on for me is I do a double um, overhand. So you come over, wrap them around, and then swip through twice. And generally that's plenty to hold it on here. If you like to tie actual knots, just make sure that you give yourself a little bit extra length so that um, if you have to cut them out, you still have enough fabric. So now what we need to do is we need to retension this on the loom. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my extra dowel rod and we're gonna kinda clamp it between these. Um, so I want it to be, so you can see if I do this under here like this, if I hold these together, I can now tension this pretty good. It's not gonna be perfect, you'll have some little ripples, but um, it'll be pretty good. One thing I may do to kind of limit that is actually take these center um, ties off of my loom. And if you have a loom where you're able to do that, that's great. Um, I know the shacked ones come with a little Texolve tie-ons. I think the Ashford ones are fixed, so you may not be able to do this. Um, you might want to put like a little piece of cardboard or something between them there just to get that. So again, like if I take this, I lay those together, and I turn them like that, you can see now when I pull, I'm getting good tension. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to tension this up, and I am going to tape these two sticks together. It's a little easier to do if you have a spare set of hands. You want to go all the way around the all the way around that. So you can like if you're a little bit smarter than I am you can uh, pull off some pieces of tape before you start. So um, I'm going to loosen this just a little at the back so that I can get this because I want this to go far enough that it's on the front beam like that. Because you can see if I, if I let it go, it will. Um, it will kind of flip back. So if I can get it on the front beam, and then we're going to actually tape it to the front beam. Come on. I would definitely recommend pre-cutting some pieces of tape. It will make your life easier. That's one side. We're not going to do this super tight. It's going to be a little looser than how you might usually tension this. Actually, that's that's pretty tight. That's pretty good. And it's not perfect, but it's, it's good enough. We're going to go good enough. So um, you do want to make sure when you do this that you come up and over your loom. Don't come underneath. If you come underneath, you will have to dim disassemble the loom to get this off. Um, so you can see now that I've done that, my last pick is kind of sloppy. That's okay. We're going to fix it. Just come back and give it a little repeat. Um, if this isn't perfect, don't stress too much about it um, because a lot of it will come out in wet finishing. I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to clip it tight. So one other thing that's real important, um, and it's less important on the first part of the weaving, but it's going to be real important on this finishing section, is that you are getting a really even um, set. So you want to have your warp and your weft to be the same. If they're different, um, see this is kind of moved my weft around. Maybe a little bit. Anyway, like I said, it's going to come out in the wash, so I'm going to try not to stress about it. Um, so if you have a uh, like if you're if you're beating tighter than your warp a lot here, what's going to happen is when we do this, 
um, it will, your, uh, since you're using your warp for your weft as well, if you're not also getting the same number of picks as you do have set, it'll kind of squash this little square bit. So try to have it be as even as possible. So I have this here and you can see I wove some waist yarn in the beginning. Um, and what I want to do is I want to bring this up and I want this to come around. So when this is finished, this, it'll feel twisted, but that's actually correct. Um, so it's this, this edge, we'll start here, right? And then we're going to weave it so that all of these ends are like that. So you can see this is why it has to be a minimum length because this corner here has to be able to come all the way up here. Um, so I definitely recommend weaving that minimum 30 inches, um, 32 if you want a little bit more padding, um, just so you've got some wiggle room here. Okay, so we're going to begin by joining this piece here. And the way I like to do this is I'm actually gonna cut really close to um, one end on my, um, I'm going to cut really close to one end of my um, waist yarn and then I'll pick this out as I go and that way the rest of it will hold this in place uh, until we're ready for it. So I'm going to come in right here, give that a little snip. Be really carefully you don't cut your warp. Um, and go right through those loops. Okay, so we're ready to start. So I'm going to take this very first warp thread and I'm going to pass it through just like that. And you want to get that snug up to I actually need to do one, let's see. So you want to look at this and see the last thread is it going over and then we want it to be going uh, over this one and under that one so we are okay there. Always good to check that otherwise you'll end up with the kind of like what it'll look like is a little skipped thread there. So I'm going to bring that right there. Bring this forward. Again, real nice, even beat. We don't want it to be too tight. Come to our down shed. The first few are going to be the most awkward. Once you get a few inches in, it does get easier. I'm going to drape that over my arm so it doesn't get too, too much weight pulling it out of whack. There's our second one. Let's see how long it is. And the other nice thing to doing this with the waist yarn is it makes it real obvious what your next thread is. Um, if you take this off, a lot of times it's real easy for these to kind of get moved sideways and you'll end up thinking, oh, that's my next warp end and it's actually the one after that. You can see I'm just leaving these hanging out to one side. That's my nice little corner there. Helps if you change sheds though.
can see that's nice and starting to come in there. Now what you'll notice is starting to happen over here is that these are getting a little uneven. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start tying knots over there. Um, just like you would at the end of your warp. And I'm going to do bundles of four. So I actually have the end of my weft hanging out over here and I'm going to add that into a bundle. So we've got one, two, three, four threads plus my um, leftover weft thread and that'll just be part of my fringe. Um, you could also do a twisted fringe here if you like and it's just kind of how you like to do your finishing. It is possible to do a hem stitch on this side but I probably wouldn't because it's going to just make your life a little harder. So there's our little knot right there. It's just going to hang out to the side and you can see that'll keep this edge from kind of bowing out and getting really sloppy. Coming back here again I like to keep the weight of this on top of my my uh, hand just kind of keeps it straight so I do need to change shadows down passing this one through couple of tricks anytime you need to put this down make sure that you put this on top so that it's not like pulling the fabric off to one side um, and kind of like I was telling you before you want to make sure you're tying these as you go so that that edge doesn't get too sloppy and I'm just doing regular overhand knots again um, we'll trim those nice and even later kind of check this ever so often just make sure that your uh, this is kind of squaring up it doesn't feel like anything's pulling um, when you take this off the loom it will relax a little bit so actually if you have a little bit of a curve up here if it seems like this is slightly wider that's preferable to it being slightly narrower um, if it's slightly narrower it's going to get worse if it's slightly wider it's going to get better Um, I am going to advance this just a little bit. So we don't want to go too far, and you'll kind of see why. Because if we get too far away, obviously we're not going to be able to get that curve all the way up. right about there should still be okay. Okay, one other thing that can be really helpful. Um, when you're reaching through there, eventually it's going to get hard to do that. And what you can actually do is take an empty stick shuttle, just fold this in half, and push that through. It's easier than reaching all the way through with your hands. Gives you a little more room.
So you can see right at the end here, we're getting pretty tight. Um, but we're just going to make it, but this is why you need a loom with a little bit of depth. Um, if you try to do this on a loom that's a little bit shorter, you can definitely do it. You can keep winding on, but what you will need is you'll need the physical cowl to be longer. So if you have a, a loom that's a shorter depth because it's going to take more to roll onto the front beam, um, make sure that your uh, the cowl itself is longer. So like maybe 32 to 36 inches instead of the 30 inches that I'm working here. Um, because the further you have to wind on, the further this is getting away from that edge. So it's just something to think about. Does it fit on here? You can see too, I'm kind of arcing up a little bit here, but that's okay. It'll even out. It will. I shouldn't be messing with it. Take the last of my waist yarn out now. So you can see even just now where I've taken that out, it gets a little trickier to see which warp thread is which. So that's the next one. And then this one, and then that last one is actually um, gonna get tied into the fringe this way. This is where that stick shuttle gets real helpful. those backwards it's not actually gonna hurt anything and we are done so um, I am gonna try to get just a little bit of waist churn in here before I take this off just like a few quick picks there to make sure we don't lose that edge. And so we'll go in and tie knots along this edge. That one will be in with that. And let's see if we can get this one down. So we want to remove the tape. You see the nice thing with the painter's tape is it just comes off real clean. And then this is just sandwiched between these two. And we need to take the 
slide it off. And what we've got in the end, it's a little bit messy now, but we'll get it fixed, um, is a woven cowl. You can get a little tucked some of that. See, it'll start to even out when we wash it. You won't even be able to see it. 